Hey guys, it's MJ, the student actuary, and I thought, um, why not make a video on 10 study tips for difficult subjects? And these techniques can be used for all the actuarial subjects, for engineering, for medicine, basically for any university course, or for any subject that you're finding uh, to be difficult. So yeah, without further ado, um, let's get into it. I have done four years of university and another two years outside of it uh, studying these exams. And yeah, I just wanted to share with you some tips that I find useful when preparing for a difficult subject. So here we go. Um, the first one is patience. When you come to study um, a really difficult subject, you need to be patient with yourself. You're not going to grasp the concept straight away like you did at school. You're not going to necessarily get the answers right on the first time you answer the questions. So you need to give yourself patience. Uh, or you need to be patient with yourself and understand that these things do take time. And yeah, so don't be too hard on yourself if you're not grasping the information straight away. And this kind of leads to the second technique uh, or tip, and that is to be confident, which is quite difficult to do right in the beginning because you're looking at this work and it's not making any sense to you. But the trick is is to be confident. You need to, well, yeah, just have that that feeling within yourself that you are going to get through it. Have that. Um, what's what's the word I'm looking for? That self, yeah, that self confidence. Um, that though you may not understand the work in the beginning. You do have a mind, it is packed with a brain that's got a whole bunch of neurons working together in a great network, and so you can um, understand all this information in time. So yeah, be confident, don't doubt your ability. Number three is pace yourself. Um, I mean, gone are the days where you can study the night before an exam. Um, that's, that's not going to work in actuarial science or for any of these difficult subjects. You need to prepare way in advance and you need to pace yourself. So don't just go like say, okay, the exam's in two months time and then on the first day spend 10 hours studying. You know, that's, that's crazy. That's kind of silly. Pace yourself. So start off with just doing say two hours a day and slowly work yourself up to, I like to get up to eight hours a day. I think that's, that's a really solid day. Um, anything more and yeah, you're going to tire yourself out. But yeah, pace yourself when it comes to studying. Don't burn out in the beginning and don't leave it too late. Okay, technique number four is to take breaks. But there's different types of breaks that you can take. Um, taking a break where you go and play like a very intense PlayStation game is not very smart. So like playing a game of FIFA or doing some Call of Duty Saying that, you know, where you need your mind to focus and concentrate, that's not a good break. A much better break uh, from studying is to maybe take a little nap, uh, go for a walk, or doing something that doesn't require uh, too much brain activity. That's what you want to do in your break, is give your mind a little bit of a rest. So, and make your breaks like between 5 and 20 minutes, and yeah, like I said, have a nap, do some exercise, Something that isn't focused on the mental area, such as gaming or reading like a really intense book. Um, number five is invest. Invest in your study material. Invest in study equipment. So by this, I mean go out and buy the best notebooks um, you can afford. Get the best stationery. Get the best textbooks. What I went and I did, what I did was I got the Samsung Galaxy Note 12.2 inch. It's pretty awesome. Uh, if you've seen any of my other videos, all those notes I've made have been done on this device. It is incredible. It is expensive. So, but this is this is studying, and studying should be like your number one priority um, in life when you're yeah when you're around our age. So. Invest in this stuff. Don't buy it uh, to play games. Buy it so that it can help with studying. Buy textbooks. Buy stationery. And yeah, if you invest financially in your studying, you're going to be more eager um, to you know invest your time. So it's money well spent. Okay, tip number six 
is research. If you don't understand something, research it. Either look for a video on YouTube, read the Wikipedia page, go to a library, like be really old school and find a book on the topic and read it. I mean, we live in an era where we have all this knowledge at our fingertips. So use it. Go online and if you don't understand the concept, Google it until you find the answer. So research, research, research. Okay, number seven is practice. You know that there's that old saying, practice makes perfect. Well, if you're doing physics or mathematics or statistics or, you know, something that requires a lot of application with numbers, but it can even be, you know, doing a whole bunch of past papers, doing a whole bunch of tutorial questions, just doing exercises in general. Um, you really want to practice, and this is something that a lot of students leave out. They will learn the theory, they'll have a great attitude towards studying, but then they'll get lazy when it comes to practicing, and this can be the deciding factor between passing and not. So practice. It takes time, it's difficult, but do it. Okay, uh, tip number eight is you need to question the material that you're learning. Um, I mean, at school, you were kind of like told these are the facts and you would parrot learn the facts and you would go and like regurgitate them in the exam. Okay, university, you can't really do that anymore. What you need to do is you need to question the material. So if something says, um, you know, this is the fact, you must say, well, why is that the fact? Um, what is the evidence behind that? How would the world be if that was false? You know, ask these questions around every piece of information and you'll be surprised. I mean, even while I've been doing actuarial science, especially the, the specialist subjects and the fellowship courses, you start seeing some stuff in the notes that, yeah, they should not really have put there or, you know, it's, it's questionable. So question the material. It's a great way to engage. It's a great way to study actively. Keep your mind shaft. Don't believe everything you read and always look for a logical, um, yeah, just a logical explanation for it. And if they're stating facts, ask yourself, can this be empirically verified or are they just making it up? A lot of the time, people just make stuff up. So you do want to question the material that you get. Okay, tip number nine, we're almost at the end. And this is probably the most important of all of them and that is to get sleep. It is very, very silly to stay up the whole night before an exam trying to study in that stress state, okay? Give your mind, <laughs> give your mind a break and get some sleep, okay? This is gonna help you drastically um, with memory recall, with just feeling confident, being energetic for the exam, and just being sharp. So you wanna make sure that you're getting between seven and eight hours of sleep every single night and especially the night before an exam. I sometimes even go to bed uh, with 10 hours to go because I know it takes a little bit of time to fall asleep. So factor that in as well. You want to have seven to eight hours of good sleep. Don't stay up the night before uh, the exam and that's why um, pace yourself study in advance so that you can have a good night rest before the big day. And then number 10 is something that cannot be empirically verified, there's no science behind it, but it's worked very well for me, so I thought I might as well share it with you guys, and that is to pray. For some reason, I, I pray before all my exams, I pray while I study, and I've done pretty well so far. So I believe in God and He gives me a whole bunch of wisdom, and I respect that some of you guys may not hold the same belief, but um, you know what they say, praying, it helps you to focus focus in on what your problems are. Um, I've noticed that like when I'll pray, I'll be like, oh God, uh, I'm battling with this section and with that section and this and that. And what that even does is it's just highlighting in my brain what areas I'm uncertain about, what areas the next day I need to go and spend more time on. So it's a great form of reflection as well as communicating with a higher power. But like I said, <laughs> I respect if you guys um, are a non-believer. Um, I hope the other nine tips have been um, worthwhile for you guys. And job, 
If you enjoyed this video, I mean it was very quick, um, subscribe for more. I am going to be making a video on how to study um, with a semantic, using a semantic net. It's a new method I've been uh, developing. It works incredible, it, well, incredibly, and I'm very happy with it. And yeah, I'm just, it's going to take a little bit of time to put it into a video and, you know, organize all the facts and stuff because I want it to be perfect for you guys. So until that comes out, if you haven't already, subscribe so that you will get notified when that video comes out. Otherwise, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm MJ, the Student Actuary, and yeah, study hard. Cheers.